Welcome to Live Daf, your online Daf Yomi Shir. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Yomi Zvachem Daf Nun. We begin on Nun Amar Alaf, right on top. Dover Halamid Behekish. Mao Shi Lamid Bebidinav. So, we're actually in the midst of a uh, lengthy discussion. We're exploring double connections. So, we're going to analyze four different um, methods of derivation, four types of, you know, drushes, methods of, uh, of learning in Teresh Shabal Peh. We have Hekish, Gzeir Shava, Kal and Binyan Ab, totally different channels of learning. Hekish entails proximity. So if the terrorist presents two ideas in close proximation, whether in the same pasuk or uh, you know pasukim right next to each other, or make some sort of uh, reference to connect them, that is called a hekish. Gzeir Shava works with words. You have uh, the same words in two different you know contexts that allows for a connection and transfer of information from one to the other. We have kalvochemer, which uh, is uh, you know logical arrangement, and we have binyanav, which is a mere comparison. We can pair A to B because they seem to be similar in our minds. Right? There are some components of similarity that allows for a connection. So the question is when it comes to halachas of karbanas specifically, can you double them up? Take information that was learned through one hekish and pass it on to a new destination using another hekish. Can you take a hekish, attach it to a gzera shava, to a kalvachemer, to a binyanav? Likewise, regarding a Xero Shava, so column two, Xero Shava, something learned from Xero Shava. Can you double it up? Can you attach it to another Xero Shava and pass the information on even further? Can you attach Xero Shava to a Hekish? What about a Kavachem? What about Binina? So we have basically four variations uh, of combinations within each one of these four categories for a total of 16 possible combinations. I'm going to explore all 16 of them. So yesterday we began with column number one. The limud called hekish, and we concluded you can't attach one hekish to another hekish, nor could you attach a hekish to a gzera shav, but you could combine a hekish with a, uh, you know, followed by a kavachimer, and now for the fourth leg of this, you know, for first uh, column would be hekish transferring over through a binyanav. Asks the gemara. Is that legal? Does that work? Dovar halamid behekish. Information learned through a hekish. Mao, she lamid bebinyanav. Could you pass it on further through a binyanav? Amar biyom yom. I'll prove that you cannot. Why? Because as we learned yesterday, how do we know that the the tzofan location, you know, requirement for the shechita and the kabbalah of the of the asham is in fact applicable to an asham? Because the Torah actually makes that statement that the Asha is meant to be processed in the same location as the Eulah. Now let's recall the Eulah was really the, the, the source for this whole suffering concept. And that's where, that, that was the first and only clear reference. Eulah has to be with suffering. So he's the source material. And the Chathas learned from the Eulah by way of a Hekish. And now the Torah states likewise that an Asha is meant to have the same location as the Eulah. So it's another Hekish, directly to the Eulah. So the question is, why was that necessary? Why do we have to go and connect? Why does the Torah have to connect with a Hekish, the, uh, the Asham to the Eulah? Just learn it by way of comparison to the Chathas. Okay, so Eulah is the source, over to the Chathas through a Hekish, and now over to Asham, through a binyanav. Doesn't that tell us that you can't do that? You can't combine. You can't transfer information through a hekish and then to its final destination through a binyanav. It's, the system is too weak for that. It gets watered down. It doesn't work. Amr Abiyam Yom. Loi lichtev tzafayna ba'asham. Because otherwise, why? Why did the Torah write tzafayna by the asham? Loi lichtev tzafayna ba'asham. It could have gone without writing tzafayna by the asham. But tesi b'binyanav mechatas. Learn it through a comparison from chatas. Which in itself learned from a, from a hekish, from the Eulah. 
Lamai Hilchas Akasve. So why did the Torah express that in fact suffering applies to the Asha? Lav Lamaimra. Isn't that to teach us the Dover Halamad Behekish? Ain't the Chaser Omalamad Bibinin Av? Okay, so apparently the point is to tell us that something which is learned through a Hekish, that often applies to Chatas by way of connecting it to Oilam, cannot turn around and be transferred to the Asham by way of, you know, just simple comparison to the Chatas. Ain't the Chaser Omalamad Bibinin Av? That necessitated this extra connection. To connect the ocean back to the source, to the oil, and learn directly from them. Well, says the Mordechai Meir. Let's turn the question around to you. Tasi bininav mi oil. Okay, but still, why did Torah have to go out of its way and compare the the, the ocean to the oil? We could have learned it straight from the oil through a plain comparison of bininav. Okay, it's fine. Was stated by the oil. Fine, that's the source. We'll expand it to the ocean by the way of Binina. So why didn't they? Why didn't you know why doesn't the Torah choose that method of derivation? My time alone, I said, why can't you learn Ashram directly from the Yoyla? Apparently there are distinctions between the two. Which doesn't allow for a proper Binina of comparison. You can refute that comparison by saying, My Loyal Shkin Kala is more uh, severe, more uh, strict than the Ashram is completely totally consumed on the Mizbeach, which Nashim doesn't have. And that disallows the comparison. Well, if so, as to your question, why don't we compare the Ashim to the Chattas? For similar reasons. There are distinguishing factors between the two. Chattas, Namik, Mifrach, regarding connecting to the Chattas, you can also refute and say, Malach Chattas, Shkim Chappers, Achayav Ekrisus. Chattas is more powerful than the Ashim. It atones for courage-related sins. Okay, says the Merchad and Asya. I understand, granted. So you couldn't learn one from one directly because of those distinguishing characteristics. But you can still pair together two and use them as a source for the third. Tesi Chadim Okay, the Torah can explicitly say it by one. It often applies to one, Karban. The other one will learn from a Hekish. And the third one will sort of uh, just compare himself to the other two through a binyanav. Let's explore various, you know, combinations here. Let's see if in fact this would work. To fill in two and leave the third one blank. Tesi chadimitat. Mehei tesi. Which one could you learn the third one from? Let's see. Lo nichta v'chmona be'oila. Perhaps the Torah can omit the oila. Okay, leave it blank. But Tasi, Machatas Vasha, and learn the Eulah from the Chatas Vasha. If they need Safin, the Eulah as well. Well, no. You can say, Malahanach Shekain Machaprin. Chatas Vasha are unique, that they, uh, their primary function is to atone for sins, which the Eulah doesn't have. So perhaps he doesn't have the same did of Safin like them. And Rashi explains, even though the Eulah we know is somewhat Machaprin, but it's not its primary function. Right? It's a gift. Which uh, has you know atonement, you know uh, properties, but it's still not comparable to the chattas v'ashem, who are kapara oriented karbanos. Okay, so that doesn't work. Next option: Perhaps the Torah should omit mentioning tzafin and and we're going to learn it from the oil and the shlamim and the yashem. But No, you can. There's something unique about an oil and ashem. They're exclusively male animals, as opposed to the chattis, which can come as a female. So perhaps it's different. The third option would be, leave out the asham, regarding tzafen, but tesi mahanach, and learn from the chattis v'oyla. Once again, they're different than the asham. An asham is only, can only be a personal carbon, a private carbon. It doesn't come as a public carbon, as opposed to chattis and, and oyla. And that can come as a carbon zebra. So perhaps they're... Uh, on a higher level, and that's why they need suffering. So you can't compare one to the other. In which case, there goes our you know our proof. We were trying to prove that something learned from a hekish cannot be transferred on through a binyan av, um, and the gemara sort of challenged that. It wouldn't work. The binyan av wouldn't work in any case. 
Okay, so regarding, let's call it column number one. The drush of the hekish. Can you pair up hekish to hekish? No, you can't double that up. Hekish to Xerashava, you can't either. Hekish to Kavachomer, yes. We have Tonin de Bishmoel. And now we have Hekish to Beninav, we sort of leave it, you know, unresolved. Over to the second column. Things learned through Xerashava. Can you double up Xerashava? Can you connect it to a Hekish? Kavachomer, Beninav? Let's see. Dobar alamed Xerashava, information derived through Xerashava. Can you pass it on with a Hekish? To your next destination. Maoshi Lamad Behekish. Amra Papa. It seems that the answer is yes. The Pasuk reads like this. So the Pasuk here is comparing the Toida, which is a Thanksgiving offering, to the Shlomen. To tell you. We learn from here. That one can use Master Shani monies. So money upon which he transferred the Kedusha of his Master Shani, uh, you know. Uh, Produce is considered a, enough personal money that he can use it to buy a toida. Now we know you can use it to buy a shlomen. What about a toida? The answer is yes. How do I know from this uh, connection? In the pasuk between the Shlom and the Toida. So this close proximation is called a Hekish, right? In fact, the Torah referred to the Shlom and the Toida next to each other. So we compare, we equate, we connect, and we learn, Lamadun the Toida, Shabbat and Amasr, you can use Master money for Toida as you do regarding Shlom. Mid the Ashkan, Shlom the Asum Master, just as you find that Shlom can be purchased using Master Shani money. Now, how do we know that Shlom itself can be purchased using Master Shani money? Now that's going to come through Xero Shava. So the source is Xero Shava. It's being passed on through a Hekish. Let's see. Ushlamim Gufayu Munalon. Shlamim in itself, how do we know? Can be purchased with master money. The Chsiv Sham, Sham. We have the word Sham by the Shlamim. We have the word Sham by master. Well, Master Shani, we're talking about you know the grain, the Master Shani, uh, a grain. And we compare. That you can use Master Shani material, Master Shani funds, to purchase a Shlomim. Okay, so there you go. That's your answer. The question was, information derived through Xero Shava can be passed on through a Hekish? The answer seems to be yes. This ability to purchase using Master Shani money is learned, firstly, from a Xero Shava, from the uh, Master Shani grain, over to the Shlomim, passed on to the Toyota through a Hekish. Homolei Mazrucha, Breder Amor, Ravin, Mazrucha came to challenge this. Conclusion. You come here from where? What's your source material? Master Shani. Master Shani is not Kachim. It's ordinary, so called mundane, relative to Karbanis. Now, our discussion today regarding doubling up, you know, uh, drushes is specific to Kachim. So, what proof does that provide? You're looking at Master Shani. It's unrelated to our discussion. Master dug and the you know the grain master is chulin ba'amu. It's not karba. It's chulin. Amalei, he says, ama amra. So, you know the one who discusses uh, this whole you know topic that you know that by karbanos you can't uh, perhaps you can't double up the rushes. He only said that it applies exclusively when the, the source and the deriver, the one that's trying to learn, are all karbanais. Lamad Kodesh, Amalamid Kodesh. The one trying to learn is Kodesh, and the one teaching is Kodesh. But if uh, you know, the source, the Malamid, is not Kodesh, then you know, there's no discussion. Then it certainly works, as per your... Uh, Suggestion? I disagree. Says Ravina. Even if the uh, Master Shani, the original you know, source, is, is, uh, is not Kodesh, we still have an issue. The fact is, the one trying to learn from it, i.e. the Shlamim, is Kodesh. So, that would certainly, uh, 
you know, prove our point. That when it comes to Karbanis, you could double them up. You can go Gzera Shava over to, over to the Yakish. Okay, so basically, did we actually prove anything? Well, it depends who you ask. According to Ravina, it was a solid proof. We see that by Karbanis. You can double up the uh, Gzera Shava with the, uh, with the Yakish. Whereas according to Marzutra, uh, he disagrees. He says, um, you can't prove anything from this case. The only way you can prove that doubling up is legal is if it's Kaddish on all sides. And then you can actually prove. You can double up by Kachim, but in this case, it's not really Kaddish on the source side. Amar Ami Okay, so let's attempt another. Sorry, sorry. Dabar Alamed B'Gzir Next question. <laughs> Something that comes from Gzir can you double them up with another Gzera Shava? Pass them on through another Gzera Shava? Ma'o shilam and Gzera Shava. Amirami ma'chama. The answer will be yes. Tanya, we have a b'risa. Back to the, uh, again, to the carbon Taida, which has four types, four varieties of breads. There's something called murbeches, more of an oily um, type of bread. We have... Um, Rebechas is actually, it's um, scalded, it's a different system. Um, scalded and then sort of fried a little. Then we have the um, chalais, loaves. We have uh, rikikin, which are, I guess, the thinner, more thinner. Um, um, first they bake it and then they uh, smear it with oil. Then we have the, um, the matzois. So actually, he's the only one who's a matzo. The other ones are considered, um, sorry, he... he um, the chalots are the only ones that are chametz. The rest is called um, the other three are, type, are, are different types of matzah. Okay, so we have four types of breads. One is chametz. The other three are matzah, uh, and they're all called different names. We have rebucha. We have chalots. We have rekikin and matzos. Now the question is, what type of flour uh, material are used to produce these various breads? So the Bible begins with a pasuk: Soilus merbechas. So the revucha, the murbechas, is made from soilus, more, you know, fine or flour. Okay, lamana, we learn from here, the revucha shabbat soilus, the revucha comes from soilus. But the other ones, chalais, you know, the rikik and the ma, how do we know those are generated with soilus? Chalais benayim, tamun we have exeter shava, chalais, chalais. So we have the word chalais by, by chalais, right? And we have the word chalais by, uh, by revucha. Just as revucha is produced using soilus, likewise, the chalas. What about rikikin? Rikikin benayin. How do we know that the uh, rikikin are made using soilus? Tamalayim and matzois matzois. So we assume that the Xero Shava here is based on the word matzois stated by rikikin. Rikikin matzois. And we connect it to the word matzois which we just quoted by the, uh, the Chalais, Chalais Matzis. Now, Chalais themselves, how do they know that they're made from Silas? Because they connect through another Gzera Shava, Chalais Chalais, to Revucha. So it's a double-decker Gzera Shava. The source is Revucha, transferred over to Chalais through Chalais Chalais Gzera Shava, transferred over to Rikikin through Matzis Matzis. A double Gzera Shava. Apparently it works. And here it's Karbanis, right? All around. Only Ravina, so Ravina challenged this assertion. He says, Mimai, how do we know that the, the second Xer Shava, Matzis Matzis, is a double deck of Xer Shava based on the previous Xer Shava? No, maybe the, um, the Rikikin learns directly from a source. Mimai, the Matzis Matzis Machalis Gomer, who's to say that this Matzis Matzis Xer Shava? is attempting to connect Rikikin. Right? It's connecting Rikikin to, to Chalis, which in itself is a derivation. No, Dilma mi Maybe we're going straight to a source. A type of Mitchell called Mafi Tanner, where it says the word Matzois, and Vir, clearly, Soilis is mentioned as the material used to make the, uh, the breads. So we're not going to a uh, a second generation, uh, uh, you know, derive. We're going straight to a source. To Mafitanu. 
There goes your raya. It's no longer a double gzera shav. Ela, my rabbi says, I'll bring you a proof. They can double up a gzera shav. The sign, we have a raisa. This is regarding burning the par koi mashiach. So the carbon that the uh, kohen gadol will bring upon sinning, he takes the par. After processing it, during the uh, you know the avodah, take it outside Yerushalayim and they burn it totally. The pasuk says, the oyer, the psaroi, the the roishay krov, kirboy, the inner, the pirshay, the, the, the even the waste, everything is left. Kirboy, you pirshay vahoytzi, take it all out, and then they burn it. Malamed, we learn from Mishnah, Mitzia, Shalom, he takes it out intact without taking it apart first. Right? It says vahoytzi. Hoytzi sounds like it's all in one. One go, right? As opposed to taking it apart first and uh, transporting it separately. No, it's all one unit. So that's in terms of transporting it out to the uh, location. Yochel Yisrofen Shalom. What about burning it? Is it burnt intact without taking it apart? Namar Khan the answer is no, because over here by the Parkoyin Meshech it says Roshay Krov, right? So this term Roshay Krov is mentioned here. Whenever Lahalam we find the same term mentioned over there by the Oila Karban Oila Roshay Krov. We make a connection via Exeter Shava, Malan, just like over there. Adeni Tuach, first they take it apart. As the Pasak there says, it's cut apart. Akan here as well. Adeni Tuach, firstly, is taken apart. So it's transported intact, but then the Tuach is done before the Shreif. No, if you're going to compare it to the Eula, perhaps, compare it totally. Just like over there, at first they skin it. Avkanam here as well. Behefshet, they skin it before it's burnt. Amalaymer, no. Pasuk says, So the Pasuk says that the, the flesh is burnt intact, inside its skin, just like Kirbo Yapirsha, which indicates that it's not skin. How do you see from Kirbo Yapirsha? No skinning took place. Amar Papa, because the, the, the Pasuk speaks about burning as Urhapar, as Besor, right? As called Besori, Vikirbo Yapirsha. So, the Torah is connecting the burning of the flesh to the burning of kirboy, the innards, and the, the waste inside the animal. So make a, a connection. Kashem she pirshoy bekirboy, just like the perish, the waste of the animal, remains inside. They're not going to take it out before they burn it. It's, it's, un, it's unbecoming. Likewise, the flesh is still encased in its hide, and that's how it's burnt. Okay, so the process of the, par, of the burning of the parka Mashiach is as follows. After the avoid and the, and the Mikdash, applying of the blood and the Mizbech, etc., they take the entire animal out intact, take it to the place where it's going to be burnt, take it apart, but they leave the hide intact. So that's regarding the Par Koyin Mashiach. How does he know his information? From the Oila, through the Xerosha. Now we're going to see that this same information is going to be transferred over to a different carbon via another Xerosha, Betani Weber Bryce. This is regarding the carbonates of Yom Kippur, the par, the soyer of Yom Kippur, which likewise are processed inside but burnt outside. Rabbi Yomir, Nemar Khan, we have over here by the Yom Kippur, oiru basur perish. The pasuk refers to skin, to flesh, to perish. Benemar Lahalam, we find by the Parka and Mashiach, previously discussed, the same three words, oiru basur perish. We make exer of shava. And we learn, mal Lahalam, just like by the Koyen Mashiach, aydin etuach vishalev hefshet. You burn it after you take it apart, but unskinned. I've come here as well by the Yom Kippur Shreifa. The same method is applied. I did it tuach, shalib behefshet. It's dissected, but there's no skinning. Now this information is being transferred to Yom Kippur from Koyin Mashiach, who learned his information through Xerah Shava from the Eila. Apparently you can double up Xerah Shava. So the answer is yes. Okay, so as to the question, about doubling up Xerah Shava? The answer is yes, either based on this, which is Rav's approach, or based on the Soilis discussion, which is Rami Bar Chama's approach. Okay, what about Xerah Shava connecting to a Kalva Chaymer? Dovar Alamid of Xerah Shava information learned through Xerah Shava, Maoshi Alamid, the Kalva Chaymer cannot be passed on to another item through a Kalva Chaymer. Well, says the Gemara, the answer is yes, based on a Kalva Chaymer. Since we find that by a hekish, which was discussed yesterday, which doesn't allow for doubling up with another hekish, it's too weak to do that. 
Malamed Behekish. Information learned through Hekish 1 cannot be transferred through Hekish 2. We had two sources for that yesterday. Rava, Ravina, right? Ima the Rav and the Ravina. So despite that weakness, so to speak, but let's say regarding connecting a Hekish to a Kalvachaymer, that works. Malamed Bukalvachaymer. How do we know that? From yesterday as well, when Tanah Rishmo, that information learned through a Hekish can be transferred through a Kalvachaymer. So despite Hekish or Hekish doesn't work, Hekish or Kalvachaymer does work. Certainly, Exeter Shava. Ha Malamedes Behekish. That can be connected to another Hekish, as we just learned earlier from Rapapa, right? With Rapapa. In Adin, wouldn't you agree now? Shetilamed Bukalvachaymer. Likewise, the Hekish's information can be transferred further through a Kalvachaymer. Now, this analysis is based on an assertion, uh, which was presented by our papa earlier, that, um, in fact, Zira Shava can pass information through a Hekish. Well, that wasn't so simple. There were those that opposed our papa's, uh, you know, uh, conclusion. Papa, that works if you hold like a papa. The one who disagreed with a papa. There goes our, you know, assertion. Michael Lamehman, that was stuck. Ella, rather, we have another Kalvachaymer to prove our point. Again, what are we trying to prove? We're seeking information on whether something learned from Xerah Shava can be passed on through a Kalvachaymer. Kalvachaymer, again, we have another Kalvachaymer to prove our point. That the answer will be yes. And the starting point, once again, is Hekish, yesterday. Uma Hekish. Shein Malamad Behekish. If a Hekish cannot connect to another Hekish. We had Rava, we had Ravina yesterday, right? Ima the Rava and the Ravina. Still, Malamad Kalvachaymer, Hekish can connect to Kalvachaymer. How? We had that yesterday as well. Tanu de Rishmo, Metan Rishmo. So certainly Exeter Shava, which seems to be stronger and more powerful. Hamla Medes, Exeter Shava Chaverte. Whose information can be passed on through another Exeter Shava. So you can double up Exeter Shavas. And we had, as we had just a minute ago, from Rami Bar Chama, Rami Bar right? Ein Adin, certainly, She Talamid B'Kavachemer, that it can connect to another Kavachemer. Okay, so that concludes that question. Next point regarding Xero Shava, the fourth, fourth item on the uh, Xero Shava uh, column. What about Xero Shava with a binyan av? Dover alamet, big Xero Shava, information learned through Xero Shava. Mao she alamet, binyan av, could not be passed on further through a binyan av. Take it, we'll leave it unresolved. Okay, so we concluded regarding the four variations of Xero Shava combinations. Okay, so regarding. Gzeir Shava with um, with Hekish, right? Something learned through Gzeir Shava could not be passed on through a Hekish. So we had a, a Machlekes. Some say uh, yes, some say no. Gzeir Shava with Gzeir Shava, the answer would be yes, either Ram Bar Chama or, uh, or Rava. Gzeir Shava with Kalva Chaymer, once again the answer is yes. And Xero Shava with Beninav, take you, leave it, you know, standing. Next column, the Kalvachim column. Dover Alamid be Kalvachim. Information derived through a Kalvachim. Mao Shilamid be Hekish. Can I take that information and pass it on with a Hekish? Answer is the Gemara, yes. Once again, the answer will be based on its own Kalvachim. Kalvachim. Uma Xero Shava Sheena Lameda be Hekish. So yesterday we learned that if the starting point is a Hekish, you can't pass that information on to Rok Zereshav. Uma Zereshav. Since we find that Zereshav seems to be weak, in a sense, Shein Alameda Behekish. Because something that was learned through a Hekish cannot be passed on through Zereshav. We had that yesterday. Rabbi Yechanan told us that yesterday. Mid Rabbi Yechanan. Nevertheless, Malamed Behekish. Information learned. By Xero, with Xero Shava, can be passed on uh, further with a Hekish, with Rav Papa, as Rav Papa just told us. So, if Xero Shava could not learn from a Hekish, but still can pass on further through another Hekish, certainly a Kavachaymer, who seems to be stronger, Halamid Behekish, who can take information from a Hekish, Midditana, as we learned yesterday, to Rabbi So you can have information passed through a Hekish and then through a Kavachaymer. So Kavachem seems to be stronger in a sense. Ain't it then wouldn't you agree now? Shilamid Behekish. 
information learned through a Kabbalah cannot be passed on through a Hekish. Okay, now this Kabbalah is based on an assumption that something learned through a Exeter Shava can be passed on through a Hekish, which was Rav Papa's conclusion on Amar Aleph, based on the uh, buying the uh, Toida with the Maiser Shani money, right? So something learned through Exeter Shava is being passed on through a Hekish. Well, let's recall, it wasn't universal, not everybody agreed with that. This works if you go with Rapapa. Elaman the less Rapapa, one who disagrees the Rapapa. Michael and Mamas now we're stuck. Take him. So in fact, if you go with that route, you don't really have clarity. Take it, we'll leave it standing. So regarding the question of Kabachaima passing on through Hekish, well, um, according to Rapapa, the answer would be yes. Otherwise, it's a question. What about Kabochemer Xero Shava combination? Dover Lamed with Kabochemer, something learned based on Kabochemer. Mao Shi Lamed with Xero Shava, can you pass it on further with Xero Shava? So once again, we can resolve this through a Kabochemer. Kabochemer. Umar Xero Shava. Since Exeter Shava, which seems to be in a way weak, something which was based on a Hekash cannot be passed on through Exeter Shava, as we had yesterday from Rabbi Yechanan, right? With Rabbi Yechanan. Still, Malamed Exeter Shava. Information learned from Exeter Shava can be passed on through another Exeter Shava. With Rabbi Bacham, as Rabbi Bacham told us earlier. Okay, so even though Exeter Shava cannot learn from a Hekish, but he can still pass on through a fellow Exeter Shava. Certainly a Kavachemah, which seems to be stronger, more powerful. Ha'alamad Behekish. Who can derive his information from a Hekish? So again, something which was based on a Hekish, something sourced in a Hekish, he passed on through a Kavachemah. As we learned yesterday, in the Tanah Rishmal. And it did, wouldn't you agree now, that information learned through a Kavachemah can be passed on through another Gzera Shava. Sheyelamid Gzera Shava. Okay, so that resolves that. Next question. Dover HaLamid B'Kavachaymer Mao Sheyelamid B'Kavachaymer Can I double up? Can I pair up two Kavachaymers? Learn through Kavachaymer A and pass that on through Kavachaymer B. The answer is, it seems to be yes. And once again, it's based on a Kavachim. says, well, Mag Zeru Shava, She'ena Lameda Behekish. If Zeru Shava, which seems to be weak, in a sense, because he can't learn from a Hekish. As Rabbi Yechna, as we learned yesterday, information sourced in a Hekish cannot be passed on through Zeru Shava. Still, still in all, Zeru Shava can pass his, his information on through a Kavachim. As we learned earlier, if you track back to the beginning of today's, uh, the, you know, the Amid here, Amid Beis, so it's the fourth line. The question was, Gzeda Shava, connecting further through a Kavachimer? And the answer was yes. And that in itself was based on a Kavachimer. So it's important to keep in mind that this factor, Gzeda Shava to Kavachimer allowance, is based in itself on a Kavachimer. Okay, so once again back to our discussion, pairing up two kavachaymers. Apparently, the answer is yes. Why? Because of Exeter Shava, which can learn from a hekish, still Exeter Shava can pass on through a kavachaymer. How do I know that? From upstairs here, that in itself is based on a kavachaymer, right? So Exeter Shava, the ability of Exeter Shava to pass further through a kavachaymer, is based in itself on a kavachaymer arrangement. Okay, so certainly, let's go back to our discussion, a Kavachaymer. The Kavachaymer method, which is apparently stronger and more powerful. How do I know? Halamad Mehakish. Because he can 
pass on information that he learned from a Hekish, as we learned yesterday, right? So you can have a Kamuchemia based on a Hekish, with a ton of Rishma. Apparently, Kamuchemia is stronger. Eila Din, she lamed by Kamuchemia. Wouldn't you agree that a Kamuchemia now can pass on through another Kamuchemia? So you can double up Kamuchemia. So this Kamuchemia uh, presentation, which is seeking to enable doubling up of two Kamuchemia, is really based. On, one, on a factor, which factor? The factor that a Gzeir Shava can pass on further through a Kav HaChemer. But that factor in itself is based on a Kav HaChemer, which was required to prove and substantiate that factor. So really, it's a double deck of Kav HaChemer. Vizel Kav HaChemer ben Kav HaChemer. Our conclusion that this you know, double Kav HaChemer arrangement works. is really based on a factor which in itself was learned from a Kavachimer. Right? Vizel Kavachimer, Ben Kavachimer. Very good. Ask the Gemara, no. Actually, it's a triple deck of Kavachimer. Ben Benoi Shal Kavachimer. There are really three layers of Kavachimer. Because we're looking at our you know, double Kavachimer package here, concluding that it works based on a factor i.e. the factor that Exeter Sheva works through the Kabbal Chaymer, which in itself is a Kabbal Chaymer, and it's also based <laughs> on a Kabbal Chaymer, you know, uh, arrangement, which, uh, you know, validated that system there. So really, you're working with a triple Kabbal Chaymer. Now, we don't find anywhere, we're discussing a double, we don't find triples. Who's to say that can work? You're right, says, well, let's backtrack. Let's shift to a different gear. You want to know whether you can double up Kabbalah Chaymers? I'll try to prove it to you from a different, you know, direction. Ella, rather, it's going to be based on a different piece of logic. Another Kabbalah Chaymer. Oh, my Hekish. Since we find that a Hekish seems to be weak, in a sense, Shane Lamed Behekish. You can't take information sourced in a Hekish and pass it on through another Hekish. You can't double up Hekish. Right? We discussed that yesterday. We had Rava, we had Ravina, right? Ima the Rav and the Ravi. Still, a Hekish can connect further through a Kavachim, or Melamid be Kavachim, as we had yesterday as well. Matan Rabbi Shmuel. Certainly a Kavachim, which seems to be stronger and more powerful. Halamid be Hekish, that can learn from a Hekish. So Kavachim can pass on information sourced in a Hekish. How do we know? Yesterday as well, Matan Rabbi Shmuel. And then, wouldn't you agree now? But due to its strength, he can double up to another Kavah Chaymer. Sheyelamer Kavah Chaymer. Vizel Kavah Chaymer and Kavah Chaymer. So basically, it's just a double Kavah Chaymer. We're taking our question, which is a Kavah Chaymer question, and basing it on another Kavah Chaymer. To conclude that it works. Okay, so Kavah Chaymer, pairing up with another Kavah Chaymer works. What about something learned via Kavah Chaymer? Which you would like to pass on through a binyan av, through a comparison. Dover lamed be kavachimer, mau she lamed be binyan av. Does that work? Is that legal? I'm going to be yet I'm going to try to prove that it works. So we know that if shechita is done to an animal, typically the point is to accomplish two things: to enable it for kosher consumption. Number one. Number two. To Save it from becoming uh, unavailable, from being dead. If it dies naturally, then it's tummy, right? It has tumma. Shrita spares it, that tumma. Okay, so what about Shrita that was done and then it was discovered the an- that the animal was a trefa, had a critical internal wound, which disallows it from consumption. It's, it's, it's not kosher, but it's, it's shecht. So it's not going to be eaten. What about tumma? The chiddush is that the Shrita process will save it, will spear it from becoming tummy, despite the fact that it's not edible, it's not halakhically edible, it's not kosher. The fact is, it didn't die naturally. There was a halachic, halachically um, certified method of removing its life, which spares it from becoming tummy. So that's regarding an animal. What about a, a bird? Well, the same thing. Shechita would prevent it from being tummy. Now, by the way, the tumma of a bird, of a dead bird, is less than an animal. It's only going to be past tumma on while a person's eating or a person's swallowing it. That's called tumma bevesavli. Okay, 
So shechita of a shreifa bird will do the same. Spirit from tumah. What about malika? Let's shift over to a a, a, a carbon, a bird carbon, where the, the process isn't exactly a shechita; it's a malika, right? Removal of its head through the kain's uh, thumbnail. So, in a way, it's treated like shechita. But let's say in this context of a treifa, will it accomplish the same? Will it spare the animal from being tummy? Very much like this. Malak vnipsis treifa. The kind does malik on the bird, carbon. It was discovered to be a treifa. So you're not going to eat it. But it, does it have tumma? Ramayimer, enam atam besablia. doesn't uh, impart tumma while you're swallowing it. Because it didn't just die. He did a malika, which is a, 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 a kosher process. Rabbi Daimer, metame by Zablia. It is metame the person. Amar, may I prove my point? That it's spirit tumma. Kalbuch, based on Kalbuch. Oman, Niblas Behim, Shemetam, Mago Mas. Even an animal carcass, which is very tummy. You can contract the tumma by simply touching it, by lifting it. So, despite its heavy tumma abilities, nevertheless, Shkitosam Tares, Trifasam Tumasa. Shkita that's done to a, an animal is mid tire, even if it's discovered to be a treifa, it spears it of its tumor. Certainly, a nivlas oif, a dead bird, doesn't have the ability to transfer tumor by way of contact or carrying. It has only a very limited tumor capacity, much lower than the animal. And it didn't, wouldn't you agree with me, that the shkita accomplished. That the shechita done to the bird would accomplish to spear it, to save it, metaheres, treifas, even if it was discovered to be a treifa, to save it, metumasa, from its tumma. Okay. So, regarding shechita by a bird, it works based on a kalvachayma from an animal. Now let's move on to the next phase. What about malika? Can that be compared to shechita by a bird? The answer is yes, through a binyana, through a comparison. So we're going to see that information can be passed on. First through Kalva Chaimah, then through Abininav. According to Rameh, Ma'am Matzino. So just like we find Beshchita, the Shchita of a regular bird, Shemachshar Tavachila, which typically enables it for consumption. And therefore, in this case, when it turns out to be a Trefa, Mita Heres, Trefa Sumitamasa, has the ability to salvage the, uh, the bird from becoming tummy, even though it was a Trefa and inedible. Likewise, well, assume Malika does the same. Af Malika Shemachshat Abachi. Likewise, the Malika of a Kachan bird, which typically enables it for consumption to the Kehanim, when it's not a Trefa. So even when it's a Trefa, at least let it accomplish to spear it from Tumut, to tire Trefa Sumtumas. So here we have information which reaches the Malika of a bird based on Bini and Af from Shrit of a bird, based on Kavach from Shrit of an animal. Rabbi Yassi disagrees. He says, look, I don't agree with Rameir. Who goes all the way? I don't agree with Rabbi Yudu says that even Shkita of a bird doesn't accomplish Tahara by its Rafa. I'll take the middle route. Daya would be enough for us to say that um, a, a bird is like an animal, in which case only Shkita will do the trick. Kinivlas, Daya, Kinivlas, Behemotahira. Just like by an animal. Shishkita, Samatahara, the Shkita of an animal. Spares it of Tumavalem, the Kasam. You can't do Malika by an animal, it doesn't work. Likewise, by a bird. Let's make a limited comparison. But according to... So, only Shkita, not the Malika of the bird. We're going to our mayor. We take it a step further. And it's based on Kalva Chaymer, which passes on through Bininav. Right? So the starting point is the Shkita of a behemoth works. Likewise, Shkita of a bird works, based on Kalva Chaymer. And then we pass it on to Malika. Even Malika of a bird works, based on Bidinav. Beloy, it's incorrect, says the Gemara. Actually, her man didn't really mean to learn. Malika from Shechita. Actually, he has a Pasuk later on, and Daf Samach Tess, we discuss it. So this wasn't really his true, you know, position. It wasn't really based on a Bidinav. And even if, Hassam, even over there in the Mishnah of Tehavi, he, if you're going to, you know, let's assume that's based on Bidinav, we still can't prove anything. You can't prove that information learned from a Kalvo Chaymer can be turned around and passed on through a Binin Av by Karbanais. Because not speaking about Karbanais. Mishchita Duchlon Ka'asyon. What's the source of this whole double arrangement here? You're coming from where? Shchita of a regular animal. Chula, not a Karban. 
Okay, there goes your whole uh, proof. We're looking about doubling up carbon, exclusively carbon consumption related issues. This wouldn't really provide any substantiation to that. If in fact we look at the source in this case, which is which is a really chula. So it really doesn't resolve really resolve our our question. Okay, we'll leave the rest for tomorrow. In any case, let's just recap the last uh, sort of last uh, group of cases, which was the um, Kalvachimer uh, column. So the question was Kalvachimer connecting to a Hekish. Well, according to Rapapa, yes. Otherwise, we're not sure. Kalvachimer with Xira Shava, the answer was yes. Kalvachimer with uh, Kalvachimer with Kalvachimer, the answer was yes as well. Um, well, <laughs> I guess we're not really sure about that. All the best to you, and that's Lacharab.